Our subject today is spring. Being a few days into the awakening season, we know there's a heap of difference between the first day of spring and the first spring day. But sooner or later it comes, that jubilant time, the time of the voice of the turtle, time for poets. And up in New England, in the north of Boston country of Vermont, amidst the rolling pasture land and the woods and the stone walls that have given him delight, we find the four-time Pulitzer Prize winner, our greatest modern poet, Robert Frost. How are you, Mr. Frost? Fine. Flattered to be called modern. I'm getting on, you know. Just had another birthday this week. That would be your 83rd, I believe. Congratulations. Thanks. But it's funny about birthdays. When you're middle-aged, you grudge every one. Then all of a sudden, you're up where you'd like them to whiz by. You'd like to be 100, 110. You want to be the oldest man that ever lived. Outlive them all. And from the start, Mr. Frost, did you always want to be a poet? No. Lots of other things I'd have been happy at. Once I wanted to be a baseball pitcher. Oh, Lefty Frost, huh? Uh, I suppose, but I started writing, wrote my first poem when I was 15. That was in March. Uh, and it was about spring. Uh, probably written in autumn. There's a line in your poem called The Mending Wall, Spring was the mischief in me. Yes, it brings out the old Nick. Uh, I once wrote, if, if God will forgive the little jokes we play on him, we'll forgive the big one he plays on us. You know what the big joke is? Spring. Why is spring the big joke? Because springs, be, spring begins in delight and ends in you don't know what. I've just made a poem about that. Comes in about right for the wide, wide world. It's called Peril of Hope. Peril of Hope? It is right in there, betwixt and between the orchard bare and the orchard green, when the trees delight in a popcorn burst of perfect white, that we fear the worst. For there's not a clime that isn't like to choose that time for the frost to strike. Uh, almost superstitious fear of delight. Folks are af afraid of the tentativeness of life so they hang back betwixt and between uh, we've got to plunge in right in we've got to live with uncertainty every general goes into battle with on insufficient information if it's uncertain for us think how uncertain it must have been for the founding fathers yes it seems to me that you wrote about that too didn't you yes in a poem called The Gift Outright. The land was ours before we were the land. She was our land more than a hundred years before we were her people. She was ours in Massachusetts, in Virginia. But we were England's, still colonial. 